Hello again, gamers. Welcome back for another episode of Rocking Twilight Imperium. I'm the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the universities of Joel Nar. So I want to start by giving a big thank you to Light Side Dragon, who is one of my viewers who requested that I specifically cover the universities of Joel Nar in this series. So big thank you to Light Side Dragon. This episode is for you. Now, uh, before I get too into this, I do want to say I've got a ton of links in the description down below that you can check out at your leisure. There's a link to BoardGameCaptain.com, which is a great hub for all things Board Game Captain, as well as a link to my Patreon. If you're in a position to and would like to support the channel, you can support me there at my Patreon, link in the description down below. And if you'd like to get yourself some cool gamer gear, some Board Game Captain merchandise, there's a link to my Teespring store down below where you can find mugs as well as t-shirts, etc., uh, cool Gamer Gear over at my Teespring store. Now, the Universities of Joel Nar are the scientist-themed faction for Twilight Imperium. Very heavy on technological development, but not so much on combat. Uh, but eventually, you can use technology to overcome your deficit in combat, uh, at least as a deterrent. Uh, I find these guys play best as a defensive faction. You don't want to be doing a lot of attacking. You want to just make the other players feel like if they attack you, they're going to pay for it dearly. Uh, but to start with, that's not going to be the case. Early in the game, if they attack you, you're going to pay dearly, and you have to work really quickly to build up your technologies to be able to change that dynamic. So the universities of Jolnar, what do you start with? So to start with, you start with a home system that, that has the following planets. You have Joel and Nar. Now there are some things that are really good about your, your starting system, and there are some things that are not so good about your starting system. So let's start with the good. So the good is you start with an amazing amount of influence. Nar has three influence, Joel has two for a total of five influence in your starting system that's a lot now when you need influence for things like for voting on agendas that's going to be really great that you started with a larger amount of influence than most other players however the resources are not so good you start with two on nar and one on joel for a total of three resources three resources is pretty good but the problem is having them split up like that really reduces your production limit of your starting space dock so now, NAR having the largest, larger amount of resources, you're obviously going to want to put your starting, starting space dock on NAR because since you get two more than the resource value of your planet for your production limit, that will give you a production limit of four for your starting space dock. But that's not that good. Uh, there are a lot of factions that start with larger amounts uh, than four. So you're probably pretty quickly going to want to get... Uh, a space dock built on a planet with a larger resource value once you take a planet with a larger resource value. If you start with a really nice high resource value planet, you're going to want to save that to place right next to your home system so you can get that out there and build that pretty quickly. It's going to be one of your early game uh, mandates to be able to, to build uh, units in larger amounts more quickly than your start home system allows. Okay, so what units do you start with in your home system? You start with two carriers a Dreadnought, two PDSs, one fighter, and two ground troops. It's a bit of an odd mixture, but it kind of makes sense uh, once you understand why they gave you this. So you, you don't even have enough ground troops and fighters to fill up one of those two carriers, which might make you, you know, head scratch a little bit. But this is a consolation to the low production in your starting system. Uh, and actually is a pretty good thing because you can send out that one carrier with the two ground troops and the one fighter and go colonize a two planet system then you could do a build action in your home system activating your home system and since you only have a production limit of four which is not that great you can build four ground troops to later in the next round move out your second carrier with all four of those ground troops and go and colonize even a three planet system if you like uh, so it, it even though to start with these guys are not going to be top tier colonizers uh, they do have a boost on the second round, getting more colonization power going round two and onward, which is not too bad. Uh, now, the next thing they start with is their starting tax. And this is uh, a, a place where the universities of Jolnar are amazing because they start with four technologies. Four. That's a lot. 
So it's all the basic text from every color. So for green, you get neural motivators. During the status phase, draw two action cards instead of one. Action cards are great. There's lots of great abilities on action cards. And you're going to want to have a nice stockpile of action cards for when you get into trouble. And get, getting to start from turn one, the end of turn one, getting two action cards is good. Next, we have plasma scoring. When one or more of your units use bombardment or space cannon, one of those units may roll an additional die. Now, you start with two PDSs to defend your home system. You can put them one on each planet, or if you want to defend the more powerful planet, you could, you're allowed to have two PDSs on one planet. You couldn't put them both on NAR if you want. However, regardless of how you do it, if someone comes a knocking, your space cannons getting the reroll is nice. Plus, you do also start with a dreadnought. Dreadnoughts can use bombardment. Uh, bombardment is really good. You get a five uh, a five on that attack roll for bombardment for trying to destroy ground troops on a planet before you invade. Getting to re-roll that makes it much more likely to hit. So this is a decent tech to start with. Next, we have anti-mass deflectors. So first thing, it allows your ships to move through asteroid fields. This is great, makes them more maneuverable. But also it says when other players use their space cannons against you, they get a negative one to their result. This is also really good defensively, helps keep your ships alive. And finally, one of my favorite basic tax Sarween tools when one or more of your units use production reduce the combined cost of the production by one this is going to be really great starting with all of these technologies give you a nice wide variety of abilities for the early game for the universities of Joel Nar. the Sarween tools are going to really help you to help get stuff out quickly and cheaply and not use a lot of resources in doing so when you do that first build for four ground troops you're only going to spend one resource for four ground troops and that is pretty great now the next thing i want to talk about are the faction abilities printed on the university of joel nar faction card so the first ability is actually a disability and it's a pretty severe one it helps to counterbalance all of the awesome stuff they get like starting with four tax and their other two faction abilities the first ability is fragile now apply a negative one result to each of your unit's combat rolls. And then they show a little symbol there with a down red arrow and a, and a minus symbol in it. And the reason they show that is because every one of your uh, units on your card has that little symbol beneath its combat stat. So it reminds you, yeah, don't forget, you're subtracting one from your die rolls. And that is rough. Uh, this this means that in the early game, before you get some technologies and other things going to help counteract that, if you get into a fight, unless you have severe overwhelming numbers, you're going to be in trouble. You are going to be likely to lose that fight. So beware and be careful of that. Uh, but a big FYI, this is specifically, and it, this is important to note, this is it's specifically with the combat role. So this does not affect unit abilities so your bombardment still acts normally your space cannon still act normally and your destroyer anti-fighter barrages still hit normally they don't get the negatives to those rolls so just an important note next we have their positive abilities the first of their two positive abilities is brilliant when you spend a command token to resolve the secondary ability of the technology card you may resolve the primary ability instead so this is huge this is a, a big boost, uh, being able to, if you don't get the technology card, which is going to be a big, big uh, objective for the universities of Jolnar to use the technology to develop technologies. You want to have be the player with the most technologies developed in the game. But if you don't get it, it's because someone else grabs it. You just spend one of your strategy tokens, and now you can do the primary ability anyway. Which, the difference between the primary and the secondary ability is that when researching your first tech, if you use the secondary ability, you've got to spend four, count it, four resources to research that tech. So the primary ability, you don't. And then if you spend six resources, you can actually research a second tech. So the primary ability is great. It's a huge step up over the secondary ability. You're going to want to get that a lot of times yourself. Just grab it so you can do it. Uh, but if someone else grabs it, it's just going to cost you one strategy token to do the primary ability anyway once they get around to doing it. So you're going to want to make sure to have some tokens in your strategy pool to be able to do the secondary ability of the technology, which becomes the primary ability, which is really awesome for you.
The last of their faction abilities is analytical, and this is a really good one. When you research a technology that is not a unit upgrade technology, you may ignore one of the prerequisites. This is a really great ability because, as we already discussed, you've got one technology of every color, which means that using this ability analytical, ignoring one prerequisite, you can immediately get any technology that requires you to have two technologies of any color. Again, ignoring unit upgrades. It's got to be one of the non-unit upgrade technologies, but you can jump right into level twos, uh, skipping the level ones if you're not that interested in them, which is really, really awesome. One of the reasons it's so awesome is that when I, and I'm going to talk about this when I'm talking about what technologies I recommend to you, the faction-specific techs for this faction both are two requirement techs. Um, each one of them you can get the first time you research tech if you want to go for those. Now, I want to move on to the characters and the mech. So the first character that you always start with, of course, is your agent. Now, the agent is Dr. Sukaban. Now, Dr. Sukaban says, when a player spends resources to research, you may exhaust this card to allow that player to remove any number of their infantry from the game board for each unit removed, reduce the resources spent by one. So this is this is a great way to spend resources to get that second tech. Once you can get a number of infantry out on on the the board, you can you can remove one to get one resource towards those six to be able to re research a second technology on a turn when you have used the primary technology ability, which again, you can do even when you are activating the secondary ability. Two techs in a single turn is great. And the thing is, remember, infantry cost one resource for two. You start with the Sarween tools, which means every time you build, you can get a pair of, of infantry for free. Uh, you can then use those as resources to be able to get more tech. So this is actually a really cool ability. I like this one a lot. Um, you do not start with enough infantry that in the first round, you're probably not gonna be able to do this. Um, but maybe starting round two, you may be able to do this and start getting round two and on two technologies every full round, which is pretty awesome. Now the commander is Tazern, which is unlocked when you own eight technologies. You start with four, and starting on round two, you're going to be able to get, at least on round two, maybe round one. I'll get into that in a second. There is a trick that sometimes you can pull to be able to even get two technologies on round one. But starting on round two, at least, you're going to be able to get two technologies a round, which means depending on whether or not you're able to get two technologies in round one, you will be able to unlock Tazern either in round two or at the latest round three, which is pretty, pretty awesome. And once you get Tazern out, after you roll dice for a unit ability, you may re-roll any number of those dice. Now, I'm going to come back to this in a minute, but to start with, just know that unit abilities include things like Bombardment from your Dreadnought. They include things like uh, the, the PDS Fire. They include things like your Anti-Fighter Barrage, but they also include a great ability you have on your flagship, which I'm going to discuss in a minute when I discuss the flagship, because Tazern, in conjunction with your flagship, is freaking amazing. But hold on to that thought, we'll get to it in a minute. Now the final of your characters is your hero. And your hero gets unlocked just like all other heroes when you have three scored objectives. So as an action, for each unit upgrade technology you own, you may replace that technology with any technology of the same color from the deck and then purge this card. So this can be an interesting last minute way to get some quick abilities for use in a particular combat that is really make or break. Um, it's not the best hero ability in the game. It's not a game-winning one. Um, but sometimes when you really need a certain technology for a certain circumstance, it can be really uh, clutch for that particular turn to be able to use this ability, get rid of a technology that really isn't doing uh, wonders for you, and just instead grab another tech that you really need right now. The last thing over here I want to talk about is the mech. Now, the mech is a 2 cost six combat sustained damage of course keep in mind that that six combat uh gets the negative one on its die rolls because of fragile but it has an amazing ability and that is your infantry on this planet are not affected by your fragile action ability you're going to want to get one mech in each of your most uh important invasion fleets 
because having that mech with them suddenly turns them into normal ground troops, which is very important for helping you win some combats. So yeah, that mech is really good. I do recommend getting some of those out and bringing them with, e either putting them on planets that you really want to defend or putting them with your, your more important invasion fleets. Now next, I would like to talk about the flagship for the universities of Joel Nar. The flagship they have is phenomenal. It is the JNS Hylarum. Now the JNS Hylarum is eight cost, gets two shots at a six, but remember you get your negative one so it really becomes the normal good level of two shots at a seven essentially, uh, which means it's roughly equivalent to two normal cruisers. Though not your cruisers, normal cruisers, because your cruisers remember get that negative one uh, to their die rolls as, as well. So this is actually quite decent in combat. It has a move one, which is normal, and a capacity of three, which is fairly standard. It has sustained damage also, which is fairly standard, but its ability is where this thing really, really shines. So the ability on the JNS Hylarum is when making a combat roll for each ship, each result of a nine or 10 before applying modifiers produces two additional hits. Holy crud, is this amazing. So now you you got two rolls. And now granted, it's, it's only a one in five chance of getting a natural nine or ten. But if either one of those come up as a natural nine or ten, it's going to produce a total of three hits. That is huge. That is, that is fleet destroying levels of power in a single ship. Especially because since this is not a normal combat role, this is a unit ability, this will chain with Tazern, who says after you roll dice for a unit ability, now that doesn't normally count combat rolls, but this is a unit ability, you may re-roll any of those dice. So if you get one hit and one miss, but neither but the hit was not big enough to cause one of those hits at least you can re-roll the miss to try to get a nine or a ten you get another chance for it and that is really pretty freaking amazing i love the synergy between the flagship the the jns hilarum and the commander ability of ta Zern. next i would like to talk about the faction specific technologies as well as what general technologies i recommend for the universities of Joel Nars. So now the faction technologies are spatial conduit cylinder and e-res siphons. Now the spatial conduit con, conduit cylinder requires you to have two blue techs. However, because of your ability with analytical and how already having one blue tech, it's actually able to be done immediately, as well as e-res siphons, which requires two yellow techs. And for the same exact reasons, you can actually research this one immediately as well. And these technologies are awesome they are absolutely fantastic so spatial conduit cylinder says you may exhaust this card after you activate a system that contains one or more of your units that system is adjacent to all other systems that contain one or more of your units during this activation you basically get a giant wormhole network that connects all of your systems with your units in it so that you can very quickly call in reinforcements to defend a system or call them in so that next turn you could attack a system. Either way, this is a fantastic ability uh, because it's, again, it's like having a wormhole network throughout all of your systems, but without having the ability for the Ghosts of Cruise to take advantage of your wormholes because they don't actually count as wormholes. Um, this technology is phenomenal and makes all other uh, fast moving technologies obsolete you do not need to get anything else to speed up your units once you have this out uh as long as you keep some units around some ground troops on planets here and there and some some units around here and there to be able to jump to any side of your pie wedge of the galaxy really awesome next we have the e-res siphons now e-res siphons say another uh after another player activates a system that contains one or more of your ships gain four trade goods so this is uh really great for once you have the spatial conduit cylinder out you see someone coming you've left a ground troop over there on that side of the universe to protect that that area so that you can really quickly use the spatial conduit cylinder cylinders to throw some ships over there if that opponent still wants to attack you and they place a, a token there you get four free trade goods whether you win the combat or not at least you got four free trade goods that are going to help you in the future uh, free trade goods are always good and it, it provides a disincentivization is that a word maybe it's a word now i just invented 
invented it, but it disincentivizes your opponents from attacking you where you have your fleets because they're going to give you free resources that you can spend. Next, I want to talk about the, uh, the general technologies and which ones I recommend you go for. Uh, there's quite a few of them that are good. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, quite a few of them, but the biggest thing I really think is awesome with the Universities of Jolnar is how quickly you can make it to getting the, the top level, the three requirement technologies of each color. So again, you start with one technology of each color, and you have the faction ability that allows you to ignore one of the prerequisites. All you have to do is get one t more tech of any particular color, and then the next tech you get, you could get the top level technology. So again, the two faction specific techs are blue and yellow. So if you get these, immediately you can get the top techs of the blue and yellow variety. Uh, which means you just need to know, well, what are some good techs you could get that are either red or green so you could get those top technologies if you want to. So for red, I have two I could possibly recommend you to get. You don't need them both, whichever one fits your requirement. And again, you only want them specifically if you're going for the top tier red tech, but I highly recommend going for the top tier red tech, which I'm going to get to in a minute. So yes, one of these would be really awesome. So first you have self-assembly routines. After one or more of your units use production, you may exhaust this card to place one mech from your reinforcements on a planet you control in that system. After one of your mechs is destroyed, gain one trade good. Okay, this is a fantastic tech because again, you're starting with not a lot of production capability and also you do really want to get some, some mechs out. So being able to research this in the first round, for instance, would be really great because when you do that build to build the four ground troops, you could also get a free mech and then you could put the mech on the dreadnought plus the ground troops and go flying off uh, to start colonizing and that could be your main invasion fleet, uh, at least for the first half of the game before you get out your flagship. This could be really, really awesome and getting free um, mechs out in general is going to be really awesome. And then later you could afford to get rid of some of those other uh, infantry you have built to be able to uh, spend them towards getting a second technology at some point. So this is this is a really, really great tech to get. Uh, the other red one I would recommend as an alternative to that, if you want to be able to get another red tech to just be able to jump into getting the top level red technology, is the AI development algorithm. When you research a unit upgrade technology, you may exhaust this card to ignore one of its prerequisites. Now remember, unit upgrade technologies are the only place where you can't normally ignore one of the prerequisites based on analytical. This would help to pick up the slack in that one um, deficit that you have. When one or more of your units use production, you may exhaust this card to reduce the combined cost of the produced units by the number of upgrade technologies you own. Now, I, I do not think this is a better option than self-assembly routines. I really think self-assembly routines is probably the way I'm going to recommend you go. But if you want to get some unit upgrades at some point um, for whatever your strategy might be, if your strategy differs slightly from mine, this is a possible alternative to the self-assembly routines. Now, for your tech to get for green, uh, the only other place where you do not have another tech to help you get the top level green tech, I would recommend either hypermetabolism or biostims. So hypermetabolism says during the SAS phase, gain two command tokens instead of one. This is amazing. This is a great technology. I highly recommend this one. Uh, being able to get two uh, command tokens starting uh, round one or round two, depending on how you get your, your tax, if you want to get this one really early, could be really, really awesome. On the other hand, Biostim says you may exhaust this card at the end of your turn to ready one of your planets that has a technology specialty or one of your other technologies. So this could be really awesome, either for using certain technologies that exhaust to do really cool abilities again, or it could be really awesome if you need to get lots more resources, readying one of your planets that you've already spent, so you have a bunch more resources ready and available for you to use, could be really awesome. So the, the basic thing is, are you going to need more command tokens, or are you going to need more resources and possibly the use of one of your other techs again? This also synergizes with one of the other techs I'm going to recommend to you. So depending on, on how you're going, the biostims might be the way to go because of how it can also refresh a technology. Now let's talk about the top tier techs 
in every color because these are awesome and these are going to be um, something you're going to be able to get at least a couple of these during any given game with the universities of Jolnar. Um, some of these I recommend more than others, but again, they are all available to you because of how quickly you can jump up that tech tree. Now, first thing I want to talk about is the assault cannon. It is the red top tier tech, normally requiring you to have three technologies. You start with one, and if you just research one of those two red techs I talked about, you can very quickly get this. At the start of space combat, in a system that contains three or more of your non-fighter ships, your opponent must destroy one of his non-fighter ships. This is a fantastic card for counteracting the, um, the fact that you get negative one to all your combat rules. Start of a, tech, of a round of space combat, before anything even happens, before any rules happen, your opponent's got to destroy a non-fighter ship. That's really huge. That's a huge deterrent to keeping your opponents from attacking you. Or if you have to attack somewhere with your flagship and your biggest fleet, say to take Mechatol Rex, this is a great way to actually win that combat. This combined with your flagship uh, and your flagship's ability combined with Tazern's ability will make that a actually very deadly fleet. Now the next tech I want to talk about is the Light Wave Deflector, the blue top tier tech. Now this is not the most overall useful of the top tier techs for the Universities of Jolnar, but it can be situationally very useful. It is, your ships can move through systems that contain other players' ships. Uh, let's say another player comes in and, and conquers the area between you and Mechatol Rex before you're able to get over there or maybe takes it from you. This is a really great way to be able to just move through their system once you have uh, faster moving ships to be able to attack Mechatol Rex again without that speed bump on the way to Mechatol Rex. Uh, there are other reasons why you might want to do this. Also jumping into wormholes by moving through a uh, opponent's system that they control without having to fight them because you generally don't want to have to fight them. Uh, there's lots of reasons why this would be actually a very cool ability to use. So light wave deflector situationally can be very good. Next, I want to talk about the yellow top tier tech, which is integrated economy. This one is fantastic. And once you get your faction uh, specific tech of E-Res siphons out, this could be the very next tech you get. After you gain control of a planet, you may produce any number of units on that planet that have a combined cost equal to or less than that planet's resource value. So again, you start with a fairly small amount of production. Being able to build without space docks is really awesome. And if you take some high resource value planets and you place them very close to your starting system, this can be a fantastic early game tech to get, which again, you might be able to wind up with this even in the first round or the second round at the latest, uh, which could be really, really awesome. And the final tech I want to talk about, the top tier green tech, is the X89 Bacterial Weapon. Action. Exhaust this card. Choose one planet in a system that contains one or more of your ships that have bombardment. Destroy all infantry on that planet. So basically, you want to move into a system with a planet you really need to take, like Mechatol Rex, that's been defended by somebody who can get a ludicrous amount of infantry on it, like, say, the Arborek, uh, as an example. You move in with your Dreadnought that has bombardment, you exhaust this and completely wipe out all of their ground troops, and then just waltz in and take it on a whim. That can be fantastic. And now this is the one I wanted to talk about that in conjunction with specifically the technology Biostims, which says that you can exhaust this card at the end of your turn to ready one of your planets or one of your technologies. You can, you can use the Biostims to ready the X89 bacterial weapon so you could do it again in the same round. This could be amazingly good for taking planets out there. A uh, really fantastic combination of technological abilities. Now, as a real quick aside, before I get into the strategy cards, I want to talk about that, that strategy I was referring to, about a way to get two technologies in the first round. So this specifically requires one of your opponents to have chosen the Emirates of Hakan, uh, or one of your opponents to have come... Uh, have some very fast colonizers that come very close to your area of the galaxy and for you to move up next to them and meet them and specifically for them to have whichever faction they are four commodities so it's most likely going to happen if they are playing the emirates of Akan. though there are a couple other possible uh factions that this could happen within the first round 
what you want to do is you want to do a deal with that player. You want to ally with them quickly. You want to trade your four commodities for their four commodities, as well as maybe trading a promissory note you have with one of their promissory notes uh, to sweeten the deal. And then in doing so, getting those four trade goods from their four commodities would allow you when doing the technology uh, action to spend those four plus two of the ground troops. If you've already done that build, you could you you will have four ground troops from the build I recommended. You could spend two of them. You have two to spare plus the four resources to research two technologies on your first turn. Now, very specific requirements have to happen for this to happen, but if you know one of your opponents is going to choose the Emirates of Hakan and you are thinking about being the Universities of Joel Nar, this might be a clincher for you because this will give you a huge boost if you're able to do a deal with the Emirates of Hakan player on the first turn. Um, specifically, the, I do feel like the Universities of Joel Nar play more strongly when playing with one of the other players having chosen the Emirates of Hakan as their faction. Now, I do want to talk about the promissory note that the Universities of Jolnar have that they can use to sweeten the deal because it's a good one. Uh, after the Jolnar player researches a technology that is not a faction technology, gain that technology, then return this card to the Jolnar player. So you can promise this to the Emirates of Hakan player as part of that deal. And, I mean, this is an awesome... Uh, ability to get being able to get one technology even a more advanced technology from you as part of your deal could be really good and again you could also use this to possibly get one of their promissory notes for a very a fairly cool ability as well next i want to talk about the strategy cards what strategy cards should you go for first uh, there's a lot of ones that are really good for the universities of Jolnar. Technology, for instance, often can be very good for them. But as, as long as someone else is taking the technology, it's actually not that important that you take it because you can get the primary ability by spending one of your strategy tokens. So that's not bad. Instead, I would actually recommend you go for construction. If you're able to get one of those high resource planets placed right next to your home system, you can roll in and then use the construction ability to place one PDS or one space dock on a planet you control. Then place one PDS on a planet you control. This is really awesome. So uh, if you get one of those high resource value planets there, you roll in, you take it, you play construction, you place a space dock there, uh, and then also place a PDS on that planet to help continue to control your side of the galaxy. Uh, but now you have a space dock with a far higher amount of, pro of a production limit than your starting system, uh, which will be very good going forward into future rounds. I highly recommend this as a starting uh, card, especially if someone else has already taken the technology card. If you're playing and you see that nobody else is interested in taking the technology card, you may want to take that instead because you want to try to get technology just about every round. At some point, though, people will be taking the technology card, at which point it's fine because you can just use your token to get the primary ability anyway. Uh, Warfare is also not a bad backup, especially if you're getting two cards uh, because to start with, you're not able to... Uh, colonize that quickly so in the first round of the game if you spend one of your tactical action tokens to build in your starting system and get those four ground troops using the warfare card you can remove that token to then move those units out and colonize another system even a two or three planet system uh, as it were because they'll have four ground troops with that fleet which could be really really huge um, that will be really awesome. I highly recommend doing that if you can. Uh, so yeah, so to review early game, construction, technology, and warfare are all really good choices. Uh, mid game, if you're having trouble figuring out what else to get, of course, there are lots of other things that could be really good for you. Once you have a border with someone, uh, it could be really good to get the diplomacy ca uh, card to stop them from attacking you. Also, Generally speaking, the Imperial card is always good for being able to score public objectives and also to get extra secret objectives to score uh, at any time. Uh, now, let's talk about what secret objectives are ones you should be looking for when you are using the primary or secondary ability of the Imperial card. So the first secret objective I want to talk about is adapt new strategies. Own two faction technologies. 
you can get these um, immediately. Round one, you can start getting the the new fact your own faction technologies. So I would highly recommend this one. This is going to be a very easy one for you to get. Next, we have Unveil Flagship. When a space combat in a system that contains your flagship, this is going to be the one really combat capable unit uh, uh, fleet of yours in the fairly early to mid game is the one with the flagship once you build your flagship. So this is going to be one you could go for. Uh, because you are when you are looking to take Mechatol Rex, it will be with the flagship fleet. Next, we have Master the Laws of Physics. Own four technologies of the same color. So now, I don't actually expect you to get the top tier technologies of every color. You're probably going to narrow it down to maybe two. And then, if you have this one, it can be very easy to grab a couple more techs once you've got some resources and you can grab two technologies on a single round. It can be very easy to get four techs of any particular color. Next, we have establish a perimeter. Have four PDS units on the game board. You start with two. If you take the construction card on the first turn, you're going to have three. It's it, You're going to have this by round two. If you get this as one of your early game uh, secret objectives, you can have this by round two. Two, very easy to get. Next, we have establish a hegemony. Control planets that have a combined influence value of at least 12. You start with five influence. You are, all, you are one shy of halfway there just for your starting system. So this could be really easy to get. You're going to easily be able to get enough planets to get that 12 influence and score that objective. So there you have it. This is how I recommend playing the university Universities of Joel Nar. You got to play de uh, defensively. You got to play politically. You got to work out deals with other players to help you get resources so that you can get those uh, two technologies every turn, maybe even on the first turn. Um, these guys are really, really cool faction to play if you want to play more of a Cold War mentality where you build up lots of units, you get technologies out that can show people that you can threaten any part of your own area, you don't really attack other players unless you're looking to take Mechatol Rex, but you make the other players feel like they are going to pay dearly if they attack you because you can have your fleets appear at any side of your pie wedge of the galaxy and then when you get into a fight with someone with your flagship and with the awesome awesome technology of the assault cannon you're going to be wiping out their fleets that they thought they were going to be invading and you know they thought they were going to have an easy pushover of a time invading your area of the galaxy. A little side note, something I do want to recommend is if you are playing them this way, where you just want to deter your opponents from attacking you, I recommend strategically table talking. Speak aloud and be like, oh, now that I have this technology, I can move my, my ships to any part of my area to respond to threats. Now that I have this technology, if you were to attack me, I could just instantly cause you to destroy one of your own ships that's not a fighter in that system. Ooh, look at how awesome my flagship is. Sometimes strategic table talk can be very beneficial. And in the case of Universities of Joel Nar, I highly recommend it because a big part of their strategy is, is just being scary enough with all of your technologies that your opponents don't want to attack you and don't want to push you to have reprisals against them. So yeah, there you have it. If I missed anything about the Universities of Joel Nar, feel free to put them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to request that I cover a different faction of Twilight Imperium 4th Edition in an episode of Grokking Twilight Imperium that I have not yet covered, feel free to comment down below and let me know. And if you enjoyed this episode of Grokking Twilight Imperium and you'd like to see me do more like it, be sure to give it a like. Share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.